Hello everyone, my name is Faith Mutegi and this is my platform, Parenting Conundrums. In my last video, I got cut off, but still the conversation continues. Now, is my child watching too much TV? I hope by the time you're watching this, because it's a continuation, that you have watched my previous video. And it's titled, Is My Child Watching Too Much? And my answer to that question was, terms and conditions apply. Just a justification that this is going to be something that you need to work on continuously. Reason being, in this season of the pandemic, technology has come right to our hands. And those homes that did not have those gadgets, it is becoming a necessity to have the laptop, to have the phone, and a smartphone at this, in this case. Because that's where they're being sent for their assignments, that's all those things. So you cannot escape this aspect of there will be no television, there will be no phones in my house. Which is a conversation you need to have or even prepare yourself and find out when it comes to phones, am I okay with my child having a phone? We shall talk about that another time, okay? That's why, please, subscribe because it's a continuous conversation. And even though you don't have a child who is facing or you're not facing this issue now, it is something that you can come back to. And that's why I'm recording. And if you subscribe, you know where to go to. Parenting conundrums. I'm at Faith Motegi. Okay? Good. So, where was I? We mentioned you are the mentor. You are the role model. When it comes to giving your child ideas of what they can do when there's no television or other gadgets around them. So, what do you do? What did you see in the previous video? Books, books, books. And I hope you have gone down. I believe I gave tips on uh, there's Dr. Seuss, there's Ladybird. I have a collection of storybooks. This pandemic has messed up with the program that I have for the children in my neighborhood. But still, we forge on. So, do you have books? Storybooks. Surround your child with books. And not just your child. At a way away. You, I'm not telling you to give yourself a challenge of 52 books of within the year or 12 books within the year i'm just saying if there can be a magazine even a newspaper even the bible it is a book that and not the, the on the app get an actual bible you take the bible if the child wants to do the bible also do it together you take the newspaper if you, you are still buying newspapers and then but it has to be tangible it's not the digital so make space for books, okay? Now, slowly we are graduating to creating an environment that makes the child realize not everything has to be. My entertainment is not just the television or the games or my mother, uh, the games or my mother's phone or my parents' phone or my auntie's phone when she comes to visit. Because if you notice, children always go. Anyone who visits, ukona game gani, ukona game gani. <laughs> That you need a salami is easy. So that is from the previous video. Role model and then bigger bookshelves, smaller TVs. <laughs> Watch, I will come and do a survey like that. What is this? This cleaning, whatever, uh, the one for the toilets, where the lady just comes to your house and says, <laughs> I will come and do a survey. So make me proud, please, as you subscribe. Moving to 1,000 subscribers. Anyway, where was I? Now, Vitabu Ume Pole Pole 2, it's a gradual process. And then, timetable, like we said, what is this priority? Like, if there was a program they had to watch, which one would it be? And then you make a timetable. Then, these other hours, find something to do. Now, this finding something to do, aside from books, who create, it's a nice idea. Especially when we were on lockdown. Hoo -hoo, I think this thing bloomed or blossomed or went viral. Create a creativity jar. It's either creativity jar or I am bored jar. You can call it either way. I think I would like with the creativity or things to do jar. J-A-R. This is where the child and you, if possible, because I know time and everything, but please be intentional. Write down as many activities, whether it's in pieces of paper or something, and put it in a container. This can be when the TV is off, I have done my homework, or when I need something to do, pick a piece of paper. And then on those pieces of paper, it's either, number one, can they draw a map? 
Yes, it looks trivial, but it keeps the child engaged and doesn't switch on the TV. Draw a map of your neighborhood or to your school or to show show. That can be one exercise. Another is, okay, hopefully on clear skies, it's nice. They need to go out. Can they identify the types of birds around them? So there'll be a time where you can give them that. They'll be on the phone. Either if it's if they're able to capture, because there's one way you can just use for capturing, and then they come and identify within a certain time. They find out, oh, this was a weaver bird. Do they know they're weaver birds? Hopefully there are birds around. If it's not the birds in the neighborhood, it's the clouds. They can sit down and try and draw the clouds in the sky and identify whether it's cumulus, autocumulus, and all that. It is an experiment. Not an experiment. It's transferring the knowledge from class into real life okay so is it that they can cook under supervision if they are little where their favorite meal if it's not the cooking do they know how that chapati that they love is made create a recipe book their favorite snack pizza or whatever it is that they love doing do they know what makes a pizza then when it comes to the ingredients do they know where tomatoes come from? No, you are, sometimes we take things for granted. Not everybody knows where tomatoes, potatoes, and all the O's come from. So it, it becomes, and then you can even look for scientific. And I'm saying you put all this, like such. Get in touch with me and I can send that your way. I believe there are some of you who, when you're watching this, I've sent that on your email. Like you have variety of activities. Some they can do by themselves, self-directed, because children need to know how to do things by themselves and not always mommy, daddy, eh, auntie, whatever uh -uh, it is. Okay, I'm bored. Uh, what can I do? And then self-directed, autonomy, independence. Because that is what they need. So these activities, even planting a bean in a what recycle a container that you can recycle, look for some soil and everything. If those are the small experiments that you can have, put them in a container like the variety when they pick to, to create excitement hmm? and anticipation. Yes. They pick and then they say, okay, so if they have the resources to do that there and then, like plant, and then they see about the roots, because I believe they, there's a way you can, you can plant the bean seed in a clear polythene, something, a polythene bag, not the burned ones, and then they can see the roots, they can see the stem and everything else. They have something to look forward to. Come up with a project. Can they, if you can get the, this small basic, show them how to use a hammer. A needle. Children are growing up without the basic skills. Crocheting. Just do it. If you used to do it, Moneshe, they might pick it. If not, they have learned something new. So what am I saying? I am saying these things, it doesn't have to be that expensive toy in the supermarket. It doesn't have to go to the mall every time. And especially in this season of the pandemic and God forbid the third wave and all these waves that are coming. You will be having your child more often than not. So, if you're not careful, the TV will be their everything. The phone will be their everything. So, create tafuta activities. By the way, what are you interested in? Constellation. Wow. They find out what the constellations are. And then at night, hopefully you can see them in Nairobi or wherever it is. Usually when you're out in the shags. Like <laughs> my shards. Ah, clear, beautiful skies. So those are the things. Therefore, whatever they have watched from TV. Huh, let me even put it this way. One of my little boys, my nephews. Huh, one time he asked, why doesn't that lion speak? He has gotten used to watching the animated version of, of what? of lions and they talk the day we put on a wildlife channel and there were lions and the lion is not talking there was confusion so bring books that talk about nature so that they know lions don't speak they roar and they do not bond with zebras they chomp them up anyway long story short vitabo books a mentor be a mentor a role model 
timetable, schedule the times, favorite programs, check, and then get a container, a hat, anything somewhere and put all the activities that they can try out here and there.